every time I carry one of these briskets out of a store, I feel like uh, wrestling. You know, uh, when they, <laughs> and what I mean by that is like, you know, they throw the championship belt on top of their shoulder, like, listen here, brother, the Brisket Brothers are coming for you. We're going to beat you all. We're going to win this championship. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, this is a brisket. We're going to be doing a brisket today. Uh, actually, I'm going to be just prepping it today for a cook. It's gonna happen later on tonight. I'm also gonna go ahead and set up my uh, smoker to get that ready, show you how I prepare a brisket. Also, for the gentleman that said you can't freeze a brisket, be thought and still cook it, uh, you can. And I'm getting ready to show you how. So, uh, without further ado, let's get in and make some brisket. Come on, brother. We're gonna win this tonight. You ready? Let's go. Alright, first things first, when I pick up a brisket, I want to make sure when you pick it up at a store, it's flexible. Definitely has to be flexible. Uh, if it's not, I encourage you not to get it. I also look for marbling. You can see this one's got some good marbling into it. So uh, definitely going to be uh, thinking this is going to be turning out to be a good brisket. It's a full brisket. Uh, the pounds on this is it's actually almost 11 pound brisket. So. It's gonna take a little while to cook. We're gonna be doing it low and slow. We're gonna do it with some post oak as well as with some prime six charcoal. And definitely look forward to see how it turns out. I'm gonna go ahead and get into the trimming process, show you what I do there. I'm not gonna talk a whole lot through it because uh, honestly that would take too long. Uh, but I'm gonna show you everything that I do. Basically it's getting all the fat that's not gonna be rendered off of here. Uh, so let's get into it. I will definitely end up fast forward through some of this. I'm gonna basically take this off. This fat is not gonna render down on this brisket. So I'm going for the big pieces first. Get all this off of here. It's not needed. Like I said, this is not gonna render down during the cook. You know, I'm thinking about doing something else with this fat. Um, we'll see if that comes to fruition or not. But basically I'm trying to get this fat, as much fat off of here as I can, and then shore it up, and then season it, and get it ready. Definitely a lot of fat on this brisket, and that's okay. It's going to be your typical uh, type of brisket, so no big deal there. Let me get the rest of this off here. We'll get to it. Alright, I got this trimmed up as much as I'm going to trim it up. You could go further if you wanted to. I'm just not going to. To be honest with you, this is just the way I'm going to do it. Uh, the one thing I always like to use is I love to use hot sauce. It's one of my favorite things to use on a binder. Not just for brisket, but also for beef ribs. I think it helps um, add just a little bit of a flavor. Not much, um, but really... It, it, I think, honestly, my opinion is anyway, that the uh, salts and everything in this uh, hot sauce helps break these briskets down a little bit more. Um, like I said, it's uh, one of the things that I've constantly used, and I think it works. Like I said, it's definitely worked for my cooks anyway. So if you haven't tried hot sauce as a binder, I would seriously encourage you to do so. Again, to each their own, whatever you want to use, you use. Uh, I've seen, I've used extra virgin olive oil. I've used other things, but I just really like 
really like using hot sauce. All right, I like to use this Black River Barbecue Back in Black Rub. As you will see, it's got a really peppery texture to it and almost looks like there's bark on this before I'm even cooking it. And um, this will be allowed to rest uh, for most of today. I will actually wrap, double wrap this and saran wrap. And like I said, it's gonna definitely add some color to this. Uh, and it's got a nice uh, flavor to it. It's great for beef, uh, definitely great on brisket. And like I said, just something I like to use. Uh, plus the guy who makes this, Mike, he's an awesome dude. So any chance I get to obviously help him out in his endeavors, uh, I do what I can. I don't get paid or anything like that. So but I would encourage you to check it out if you haven't already. Um, Back in Black River Barbecue, I'll put the link down in my bio. Um, I'm going to go ahead and season this up. Like I said, this sh should turn out really good. Alright, so tonight when I'm going to end up cooking this, I'm going to go ahead and use this minion method. And basically what it is, as you can see, I got my charcoal chimney full of the used Prime 6 charcoal. And then down below this I have layers. And then outside the layers I have wood, post oak wood mixed with Prime 6 charcoal. So essentially when I get this lit, I'm going to dump this into here. And then of course after I get that lit, all that's going to start to burn on to the outside. And then we're going to get hopefully some slow smoke all the way around. So I'm going to show you how that happens later on tonight. But I figure I'd go ahead and let you see how the minion method works, at least as far as it's concerned. And you'll see it's kind of a little bit different. Sometimes people use the snake method. I'm using it where it kind of goes out. So you'll see that later on, like I said, and uh, definitely should be a fun cook. Definitely excited about making this brisket. So here we go. Get this thing lit. Yeah, a couple different cubes down here. That's fine. It's not a big deal. Get those rolling. Thought I had that one going. Guess I didn't. No big deal. We'll go ahead and stick this in there. Get the chimney going. And then we'll get this rolling. And then we'll dump this into the center. Yeah, that should be good. Alright, so as you can see, we got the Prime 6 charcoal rolling hot. Go ahead and stick this down in there. Right there in the center. Just gonna get that going. Wow. Look how hot that is. That's gonna get everything rolling. It's gonna obviously spread out to the other charcoal. And then we'll have a nice little fire going on. Uh, so it should be good. You can see you get that uh, next grade in there. I'm gonna ready to add the other plate to that top. So it'll be indirect. So uh, we'll get that going, see how it goes. And let's go from there. All right, so as you can see, we got the uh, deflector plate in there. We're gonna re-add the plate, uh, the pan on top of that, and we'll go from there. All right, first things first, I'm gonna add a little water there. Well, I should say a lot. <laughs> Definitely a lot of water. Uh, next, I'm gonna go ahead and add the uh, beef stock to this. And then uh, also, Last but not least, a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. Get that in there. And we have a little bit more water. Most of this is water. So that's not a big deal. That helps steam the brisket as it's getting cooked, so not too worried about it. Uh, we'll go from here. Oh, also, by the way, I forgot to mention uh, adding some of these barrel proof bourbon barrel bark bourbon chips I tell you what they got a great uh, flavor to them great uh, you know like I said just I got a very good strong bourbon flavor to it so I'm adding this into the cook as well uh, should be a good one so uh, stay tuned for that all right as you can see basically we got the uh, brisket going down in here uh, as you can, it should be a good one definitely looking forward to it got the uh, 
drip pan down below, got the uh, charcoal or the divider plate beyond that, and then of course the uh, charcoal. So, uh, along with the uh, bourbon barrel chips and of course the post oak. So, it should be a good cook. Let's we'll see how it turns out. Uh, definitely more to come. Oh, yeah. It's kind of hard to tell at this point, but we are at the 164 mark. Uh, I actually got lucky, uh, real lucky. So I'm gonna go ahead, we we'll get this wrap, get it back on the cooker, and of course uh, keep this thing rolling. So uh, definitely looking forward to it. As you can see, that, that brisket, it turned out really good. In fact, look at that. You can just see, look. Oh yeah. Oh, so tender. This choice brisket really, really is probably one of my best ones to date. Uh, I'm not lying. It turned out excellent. A perfect smoke ring, juicy as can be. Uh, you can see, I even put it in the camera here so you can kind of see it up close. But look. You can kind of see what what we look like right here and look it's just pulling apart right there see so see look at that yeah all the collagen melted it's like butter honestly oh this will definitely be one memorable cook for me and uh, like I said you can't beat it um, I'm looking forward to sharing this with the family later on today. It's just so good. Um, so uh, hit that subscribe button if you like this. Obviously, you know, let me know down in the comments down below what you like, what things you didn't know about before as far as how I cook a brisket. Uh, I think the key is it's low and slow anytime you do cook, cook a brisket. I know some people go rather fast. Now I do mine around 275, so it does uh, get done a little bit sooner, a little bit faster than say a 250 or 225. But honestly, I've never found poor results from cooking it at 275. Uh, other people may say different, but I know for me it works. Uh, again, appreciate you turning in. Certainly had a great time making this brisket for you guys. And again, I wish I could share it with you because it is so good. Until next time, keep on cooking. <laughs>